Hello friends, this is Nikhil Naka from RLC Education. In this uh, video, we will discuss about syllabus analysis of utilization subject. It is generally called as utilization of electrical engineering. So this particular subject is very important in two cases only. It is required to be studied by students of electrical engineering in two cases. One case is for their semester examinations, generally in uh, third year or in the final year, generally you come across this subject and apart from that semester after the semester examinations again when you have to study this subject means that is when you are appearing for some uh, uh, competitive exams other than gate and ies so other than gate and ies most of the competitive exams like psc examinations or state level exams or je exam such kind of uh, and some entrance exams such kind of exams definitely they will be having utilization topic included in the syllabus so because we are primarily intended for student we are primarily intended to serve the students uh, who are appearing for competitive exams definitely it is very important to understand the syllabus of utilization of electrical engineering for competitive exam point of view so in general utilization of electrical engineering has got these four topics in general so these four topics are electric heating b electric welding c electric traction and d illumination engineering so these are the commonly uh, available topics in utilization but once you go you are appearing for some exam uh, let us say some recruitment exam like transco or such kind of exam first you have to look into the syllabus of that particular exam and find out which of these four topics are given in the syllabus because in general i will explain about all the four topics but some of the competitive exams include all the four topics in utilization subject some of them take only two of them or three of them like that so it is our duty to it is my duty to give you idea about the all four topics but it is up to you to read which topic okay depending upon which type of exam you are preparing for and what is the syllabus given in that particular examination notification okay so in utilization i can see utilization of electrical engineering is a part of power systems although we explicitly don't study the utilization topic in power system subject why because the entire generation and transmission and distribution of power which is generally studied in power systems is finally for the sake of being utilized isn't it for the finally for the sake of being utilized you are creating this whole big power system and maintaining and studying analysis of power system so on and so forth so how important it is studying about generating transmission lines and distribution lines it is equally important i can say knowing about how the power is been utilized in general okay so if we talk about the utilization pattern that means before this i would like to give an emphasis on the speciality or beauty of electrical energy for in specific see there are different kinds of energies available in the universe but electrical energy is not directly available somewhere else isn't it for example you have some coal mines okay in some uh, energy you are having coal mines okay coal mines have got which energy chemical energy which can be converted into heat energy by combustion for example you have some high lakes or mountains wherein you have uh, flowing rivers which has got some potential energy and then you have solar energy okay solar energy has got heat as well as light and you have wind energy which is again a kinetic energy so there are different kinds of energy resources on the on the earth and these energy resources are not uniformly distributed okay and and a person okay or a general human being he just not requires only one form of energy he requires different forms of energy for example uh, what are the different types of energies that we use in our home regularly you require a fan that is a mechanical energy is required and you use the stoves cookers you require heat energy we require lights we require light energy isn't it so these particular energy resources are directly available in the universe like i said where there is a coal there is some chemical energy by combustion you can get heat energy and from sun you have got light energy and you have got heat energy let us say somewhere uh, some thousand kilometers away there is a big coal mine there i have some lot of coal i am burning that coal so out of that coal lot of heat is being generated i want to i want to use heat right to do cooking purpose so can i transfer that heat from coal mine to my house is it possible in any way no suppose i want mechanical energy to rotate this fan so that i will get good air so mechanical energy is available somewhere in the wind okay some location where heavy winds are blowing 
can i have any mechanism so that i can tap that energy in the wind and i can directly rotate my fan no suppose i want light in the night light energy is available in the daytime in the form of sun solar energy so can i capture the light and give it in the night time no so basically what the kind of energy resources the human actually requires are suffering from lot of disadvantages like transportation and storage and convenience and flexibility of usage but we require them so that is where the concept of generating stations came into picture it is a generating station is a combination of various equipments which will convert the readily available form of energy resources into one special form of energy called as electrical energy so electrical energy has got it is, i can say it is like a scalar quantity that means it is it can become anything okay it can be anything see now let us say i am generating electricity from coal in a thermal power station ye thermal power station se jo bahar electricity aaya hai what is coal how how energy electrical energy is generated from coal by heating by conversion of heat into electrical energy isn't it so this electrical energy jo thermal power plant se bahar nikla hai it does not say that i will convert back into heat energy only although the cause of this electrical energy from thermal power station is due to some heating effect this particular electrical energy can be converted back into light or mechanical or sound or whatever so that is the speciality of electrical energy it can give space for all kinds of energies within itself and it can give rise to all kind of energy back so that is the speciality of electrical engineering so i can say if you are an electrical engineer you are not just an electrical engineer but rather you are also a mechanical engineer you are a heat engineer you are a sound engineer combination of all engineering becomes electrical engineering because this one electrical energy basically main concept of engineering is is organization of energy you just have to know how to use the energy to get things done that is what engineer base engineering basically deals about so but electrical energy is a unique form of energy which has got all kinds of energies within itself isn't it so it is you should be proud as an electrical engineer so the whatever electrical energy is been generated electrical energy is not directly available in the universe as i was telling it should be converted from readily available form of uh, resources so we are using a device called as a generator which is used to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy whatever the available energy resources you are making sure it is converted into mechanical form and that mechanical form you are feeding to a generator and you are converting into electrical energy about 90% of the total electricity generated in the world is from conversion from mechanical energy to electrical energy and then out of total generated electrical electrical energy about 70% is converted back into electrical to mechanical that means motoring so majority of the load on the power system is a motoring load and apart from that other major loads are like around 20% will be heating loads basically for industrial heating purposes and remaining 10% will be around domestic purpose okay domestic purpose and agriculture these kind of things comes under remaining 10% consumption so we are going to look at some energy intensive utilization applications in this particular topic that is we are going to see about heating so in heating you are seeing a method wherein you can convert electrical energy into heat energy and where you will use this heat energy basically in a device called as furnaces so our primary discussion will be regarding the furnaces heating in heating topic so basically this process of heating can be done in two ways because we are electrical engineers from our point of view there should be only two ways one is electrical method other one is the non electrical method so non electrical methods you know by using of some gas or some kind of fuel like coal you can do the heating you can produce heating whereas by converting electrical to heat energy okay that is another way that is electric form of heating so this topic is also called as electric heating so we will study in specific about electric heating what are the advantages of electrical heating and what are the different types of furnaces which are used for generating heat and uh, getting the industrial applications done so basically heating is done in furnaces in two ways electric furnaces are two types generally in general there are uh, different techniques of heating are there one is resistance technique okay resistance furnace and we are having arc furnaces and in fin finally we will also discuss about induction heating techniques okay induction heating techniques and also capacitive heating techniques 
that is we are going to study heating caused by all the three passive elements what are the three passive elements in electrical engineering there are only three passive elements r inductor l and c okay finally passive element is that which consumes energy right so we are making the heating possible by utilizing all the three effects or the three passive elements in three different ways and then we have electric welding why do we require welding welding is basically a process wherein you will join two metals okay joining of two metals or deposition of a new metal into a worn out metal so these are the basic purpose of a welding earlier there used to be mechanical ways and chemical ways of joining two metals together or doing welding but later on as technology developed we have got various wonderful techniques of welding okay various wonderful techniques of welding that is joining two metals together so like there are around 10 different ways of welding but for in general for our syllabus we will be discussing only about two weldings one welding is called as resistance welding and the other popular welding method is called as arc welding so this becomes a one of the important mcqs in generally it will uh, he, he, popularly ask question in electrical welding which of the following electric welding method is popular arc welding method is a very popular method as compared to resistance or electron beam or other forms of welding L ultrasonic welding we are having laser welding like that so this is about welding so how do we produce the arc instead of welding in arc welding and how do we use the resistance concept because resistor is a device which converts electrical to heat energy so that is what in welding process we require heat energy as well as mechanical energy if you want to fuse two metals first you have to heat them and get them into semi molten state and then fuse by applying some mechanical pressure and then cool it then it will become welded joint so that is the in general process of welding and then you are have to study about electric traction so this is one of the major electrical to mechanical conversion application okay i mean traction electric traction means what basically you have studied we will discuss about converting or using electrical energy to run trains to run locomotives basically okay so we will discuss in depth about electric traction and many might many of you might have already watched my full course my complete course on electric traction on youtube basically that is the topic which fits a lot of name for my channel okay so we will discuss about different electric traction and non-electric traction methods and we will continue our discussion regarding the traction so in order to run an electric train what are the different configurations of the train and what are the different types of supply systems available for uh, providing electric supply to the train and what are the different sub, uh, power collection gears and then we will discuss about the traction mechanics that means what is the force required okay to move a train for a given weight and different conditions those are such kind of uh, aspects and then specific energy consumption coefficient of adhesion and such kind of some mathematical aspects scheduled speed average speed and uh, you know maximum speed speed time curves so these are various topics available in electric traction and it is the one of the most important uh, topic in utilization of electrical energy okay and many people uh, many students in general as far as my experience is concerned they feel comfortable in these three topics but most of the student get confused in this topic or they feel or this subject appeals to be a little bit difficult as compared to the other ones that is illumination engineering so in illumination engineering we will be specifically dealing how electrical energy is been converted into a light energy so conversion of electrical energy into light energy takes place in a device called as a lamp lamp is such a device which converts electrical to light energy so this lamp also can be based on resistance or arc so there are resistance based lamps and arc based lamps and we will discuss about different types of lamps mercury vapor lamp so sodium vapor lamp okay low pressure mv lamp led bulbs led lights what are the different colors and different characteristics of different lights for which is which fluorescent material you will have which color of light in a tube light what are the different wattage what is the luminous efficiency such kind of aspects and other aspect would be the theoretical aspects are some important definitions there are around 20 to 25 important definitions in this illumination engineering the moment you are perfect with this all the four, uh, 20 or some definitions which i am telling like uh, candle power illumination brightness the units of each quantity each terminology units becomes a very important aspect so such kind of things once you are perfect with that and finally we will go into lighting schemes how do we design lighting schemes and how they are designed indirect lighting scheme direct lighting scheme semi-direct 
such kind of things so, so these all things will be covered in illumination in a very smooth manner that you don't even understand that you understand it that means the subject you might have felt it difficult in your earlier days when you studied directly rawly their illumination engineering but once after our classes you won't feel like that and you don't even think that it was so difficult as you thought because basically this is a very uh, interesting subject basically you utilization in general we term it as a dry subject because there is not much mathematics or such uh, things to discuss it is generally like a storytelling only only theoretical bits will be asked in this multiple choice questions generally and there are very uh, very rare uh, problems if there if there is anything okay and they are very easy also so that is about utilization subject okay and uh, the way how we can prepare for utilization subject is uh, there is a book called jb gupta the author is uh, jb gupta and uh, he has made a book there are two uh, books from jb gupta in both of them the same subject is available uh, one is called as uh, a course in electrical power this is a very big book in this you will have all the topics ranging from generation transmission distribution production to utilization also so that is a very wonderful book and at the end of each chapter you have a lot of mcqs so practicing those mcqs is more than enough for appearing for utilization uh, topic and uh, the other uh, there are other books also but i don't uh, want to uh, refer to them but this is okay okay jb gupta is more than enough and uh, most of the graduate electrical engineering students now who have been preparing for competitive exams might be introduced with this uh, so called book competitive book called as an introduction to electrical engineering by jb gupta it's a wonderful collection of mcqs so it is very much uh, helpful and uh, if you study all the mcqs for uh, utilization from that book itself just practice each and every mcq that would be more than enough for appearing for any competitive exams which is having the utilization topic so this is about the syllabus analysis of utilization thanks for watching